for those of you who are new here. Um, I'm Dr. Reed. I, I um, have students in the in my research lab, and I also coordinate the um, at least the STEM, the science students, um, during the summer. We meet once a week or thereabouts, and so it is my great duty to um, present them when they give their final presentations. So first in this series, I think this, this is our Beckman series. Yes, it is. Um, so we'll be hearing a lot about Daphnia more than you ever knew. <laughs> um, first up is Claire Lapser. She worked with Dr. Matt Beckman, special guest over here, and she will be talking about the development of RNA interference or RNA RNAi tools to study PAX6 in Daphnia Thank you. So, <laughs> before I launch into a long explanation of what I worked with during this project, I'm going to give you some background so you know exactly what this organism is. Um, Daphnia magna, and it is a freshwater microcrustacean, also called the water flea. And interestingly enough, this thing is a cyclops. It's got a single um, cyclopean eye, and it's just like the folklore and the fairy tales, except this one actually exists for real. Um, fortunately, it's only two to five millimeters long, so it's visible with the naked eye, but it's not quite big enough to eat you or your children. <laughs> um, as I mentioned, it's a freshwater organism. It can also live in brackish habitat. So uh, lakes, water, um, streams, rivers, ponds, all over the world, including um, Lake Calhoun here in Minneapolis. This is where a lot of our Daphnia were uh, selected from. Here's an image by one of my lab mates. This is the frontal view of the Daphnia, blown up quite a bit, but you can see that single eye there. All right, so for my project, I worked with a specific gene called PAX6, um, also called the IBIS gene. And as you might infer from the name, um, this gene is responsible for the development of that single eye. Uh, it has been called the master control gene in imophagenesis. So since it's a master gene, or master control gene, it turns on other genes for formation of the eyes, uh, the brain, the spinal cord, so the central nervous system, as well as the pancreas. And this is a gene that is present in nearly all other organisms in one form or another. So in humans, um, if this gene is damaged or knocked down, uh, it can cause issues such as midline defects, so like cleft palate, cleft lip, um, and also a disease called aniridia, which is absence of the iris, which is another eye formation. Um, and you can see four individuals here with aniridia. Um, we looked at Drosophila melanogaster, which is a fruit fly, and since that's pretty close to the, uh, to the daphnia, we were able to compare the genomes to make sure that the um, not as well documented daphnia is in fact the eyeless gene that we're um, looking at. All right, so the, so the central question of this whole project, um, for my project, was what role does the gene PAC6 play in the daphnia eye development? And then how do we find out what role it plays? And the best way to do that is to just knock it down. Um, if you get rid of the expression of a gene and you look at the um, resulting organism, and you compare it to that um, wild type organism, you, one that doesn't have an issue, you could say, um, you can probably infer what that gene would have done if it had been expressed. So with the daphnia, if we knock down the gene expression with a method called RNAi, we should hope to see uh, daphnids with improper or no eye development. All right, now RNA interference, it occurs in nature or under a microscope with a scientist. Um, and really it's a method of um, regulation, gene regulation. So if there's um, foreign DNA that gets in, it knocks it or breaks it up so it isn't a threat to the cell. Um, typically in your cells, you've got your DNA, which most of you probably recognize, that double helix, and that is transcribed into a single strand of RNA. Uh, typically that would then, it's like a code, it is then translated into a functioning protein. That protein then uh, builds up the components of any organism, in this case, the daphnia. And this particular protein would build up the eye. So in our case, sometimes um, double-stranded RNA can be introduced either by a virus in nature or by a pipe tip, as I did. Um, and when that is introduced, uh, an enzyme called dicer slices it up 
and that single-stranded RNA pairs up with the original single strand and forms a double strand. And then the cell starts to recognize, okay, this might be a threat to you. It might be foreign DNA, so I'm just going to chop up in pieces so we don't risk anything. Um, when that is chopped up, it cannot make that functioning protein. When the protein is not functioning, it cannot make the Daphne I. So we have an eyeless Daphne, hopefully. The process of this is very complicated. We did a lot of experiments that I can't even necessarily keep track of. If I have my notebook, I could probably tell you. But I broke it down into sort of a simple uh, schematic. So what we really did was we first isolated a gene. We took the whole genome and we selected for one little piece of our gene. So in my case, pac 6 um, I designed gene-specific primers, which are little um, segments that clip on to either end of my segment. And then I can take, get rid of everything else, all the other junk in the genome that I have in my segment. Um, with that, I have a physical copy of my gene. And then manipulate that, that little segment of the gene. I can also manipulate something called a plasmid, which is a bacterial, kind of like DNA. Um, and this is typically round, but it has to be made out of tape. So that plasmid and my inserts are manipulated. I then fuse them together in a process called ligation, so they become a whole. So going back to that um, process of gene isolation, this, don't pay attention to all the letters, this is the uh, part of the DNA genome, the ACT gene. And um, the blue segments is where the primers will attach. So I, I entered the um, primers into the mixture, and hopefully everything else got cut off. So here I have 896 base pairs. This whole sequence is exactly what I will be working with throughout the project. I also did a shorter segment just to see um, if the longer versus shorter worked better, so I did a comparison. And same thing here, snipped off all the ends so I have 334 base pairs that I will be working with. So then I took those two products, the long and the short, and I, I performed a method called R uh, PCR, poly or, oh, excuse me, polymerase chain reaction. And what that does is it makes millions and millions, if not billions, of copies of what I have put in. So, once I have those millions and billions of copies, I can put it into something called a gel. And we ran what was called a gel of electrophoresis. And basically what you need to know of that is here's your chamber, here's the gel, there's a well that you enter your sample into, and there is a positive electrode at the bottom, and that pulls a negatively charged DNA down into the gel. So here is the resulting image. Um, along the left side here, you can see what we call a DNA ladder. And we insert that into the well also. And it basically contains um, known lengths of DNA. So it works as a ruler. So we know that this is 300 base pairs, 500, 700, uh, et cetera. And when we run the sample next to it, we are able to compare and see or estimate the length of our sample. So here's my well example. I see that it is between 700 and 1,000 base pairs. It should have been 896, so good. That is where I wanted it. <laughs> Similar to the short length, short segment, that's right around 300, and it should have been 334. So both of these images, this is all one gel, but both of these um, wells give me assurance that I have in this gel what I have selected for, the exact um, insert that I put in, so I can move forward. Why oh, I should actually go back. So then we took, we took these um, segments. There's my gene segment from the original image and then that um, plasmid, bacterial plasmid that I had, and we do the process of ligation and fuse them together. So now I've got a round piece of plasmid. Um, but again, I'm not sure what I have in there is exactly what I want to be in there. So even though it's kind of counterintuitive, I cut it back out in just a little sample. And I run another gel. And so what I want to see is that that plasmid and that insert have been separated, and they're still the same thing that I wanted which fortunately is what happened. So the plasmid should be 2,790 base pairs, and it runs right between 2,500 and 3,000 base pairs, so that's good. And then my inserts, here I have the long gel, here I have the short gel. Long is right around 1,000, and the short segment is 
between 300 and 500. So again, what I wanted. And this gel actually was sort of a big success because it showed that all the manip manipulations we had done in fact worked, so we all did a little happy dance when we got this image. Or I did, I don't know if anybody else did. <laughs> um, so then I go back to that original circular piece of plasmid that I found out worked, and I'm able to shock the bejesus out of it when I mix it with competent cells, the bacterial cells, which is HT115. And once those have been shocked, it actually puts the plasmid inside of the bacteria, as you can kind of see here. These have been enlarged, they're not that big, they're not much bigger than Daphnia at this point. Um, but so we feed that bacteria to the Daphnia, and that is actually sort of a weird process, because that's gonna knock down the gene expression, the RNA interference. Um, typically you'd have to inject the double-stranded RNA, in this case we just pump it into the water and they supposedly eat it. And these are my results. Um, this is preliminary data, so I would need to do many, many more feedings to actually see um, results of the knockdown and the improper eye development. Um, but I did get six days in. So some things you need to know. Here's my log segment, my plasma is the long. Plasma is the short that I was feeding to different Daphnia. And the control, I was just feeding the Daphnia um, algae, which is typically what we eat, to make sure that they were just losing eye development on their own free will. Um, and then we also counted how many stayed alive and how many died. Um, just to make sure that um, the treatment was not killing them all off. We wanted to make sure they were living and taking in the plasma. So I got four images. Here's an image of the long. Here's an image of the short. This is the eye structure, by the way. And then the next day, I took another photo of the um, daphnia that had the long treatment and a daphnia eye that had the short treatment and the control. And it doesn't look like they're very different because they aren't. Um, these are all still the same size that we would expect from a wild type organism. Um, and as I mentioned, we would need to do repeated feedings to start to see um, smaller eyes and no eyes at all. All right, so all in all, what have I done this whole summer uh, successfully? There were a lot of not successes around along the way, but we don't talk about that. So <laughs> I successfully isolated the gene segment, the gene that I was looking for. I got that out of the Daphnia. I also engineered a plasmid to contain that gene insert, and then developed a feeding strain as a tool for RNA interference. And I did begin um, preliminary feeding experiments, as you saw in the last slide. Uh, so what's next? Basically, just rinse and repeat, do it over again. Um, get a lot of feedings in, collect a lot of data, a lot of photos, and you were, would then be able to manipulate that, that data and see um, the effects of the RNA eye. But really, I uh, developed the tools and would then be able to report that. Uh, so I'd like to thank um, the Ergo staff and faculty, Jen um, Bixie was in here earlier, um, Kirsten, my mentor, Matthew Beckman, who put up with all of us, and my fabulous lab group, who you can see here. <laughs> <laughs> and does anybody have any questions? Thank you. So you have the pictures on like, oh, it's a day six, yes. day five, day six. <clears throat> so why is it just till day six? Why not like day ten? Do the Daphnia die off? What's um, day six was yesterday? <laughs> so that's why. <laughs> 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 and this was the weekend when okay. we were gone. Um, so yeah, it's day six. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
expecting sure more in that embryo. Part of it was we had hoped to get to this sooner, but there were hiccups along the way. Um, so it's surprising that we actually even got the preliminary uh, experiments. Um, I'm sure it's possible to have a knockdown in the first generation, um, but not necessarily. Yeah. What is it about the eye that Okay. Um, 